Washington is planning a new approach to Asia Pacific by flooding the region with the most sophisticated weapons and technology at its disposal. Defense Secretary Ashton Carter indicated the U.S. is increasingly worried about the rise of China. We and many other countries are deeply concerned about some of the activities China is undertaking. Its opaque defense budget, its actions in cyberspace, and its behavior in places like the South China Sea raise a number of serious questions. Tonight, tornadoes have struck in eastern Iowa, northern Illinois, and Ohio. Looking at live video from storm chaser Matt Sallow in Washington County, Iowa. Back in the Weather Center, Chad Myers is tracking all of it. He joins us tonight. So what's the latest, Chad? We have and still do, Anderson, have large and violent tornadoes, F3s, maybe F4s. I've seen video of these storms on the ground, many of them through farmland, but some have hit cities. They are moving out of northern Illinois and into southern Wisconsin right now. Bonners Lake area, you need to be taking cover. To the east of Rockford, be taking cover. That's Harvard area there. These have been large wedge tornadoes with wind speeds in excess of 130 to 150 miles per hour. Here they are now, east of Rockford, moving to the northeast. Grand Prairie was hit very hard by a tornado. is reporting that uh, Russian hackers broke into the White House computer system last year. It's being called one of the most sophisticated cyber attacks ever launched against the United States government. U.S. intelligence agencies say hackers working for Russia broke into White House computer networks. Well, for its part, the White House says nothing top secret was breached and no sensitive information leaked out. It refused, however, to confirm that it was Russian hackers who were responsible for the attacks. It's certainly not the first time news outlets have been quick to point the finger. Russian hackers are said to have attacked hackers from Russia. Russian website is hacking. In Russian hackers. A Russian cyber crime ring. While the Russian president's spokesman was asked to comment on these latest accusations, he says he doesn't know which sources could have identified any specific nationalities, adding that blaming Russia for everything is already a kind of sport, as he put it. Hello everyone, I'm Christine Johnson. And I'm Vladimir Dutier, thanks for joining us. We're learning new details now about the deadly German wings plane crash in the French Alps. The New York Times is reporting that evidence from a cockpit voice recorder indicated one pilot left the cockpit before the plane's descent and was unable to get back in. According to the Times, the investigator said, quote, the guy outside is knocking lightly on the door and there is no answer. And then he hits the door stronger and no answer. There is never an answer. You can hear he is trying to smash the door down. One senior military official is reported saying, we don't know yet the reason why one of the guys went out, but what is sure is that at the very end of the flight, the other pilot is alone and does not open the door. Now, we also learned today that three Americans are among the victims. And joining us now with more, former National Transportation Safety Board Chairman Mark Rosenker. Mark, this new information from the New York Times about a pilot being locked out of the cockpit, what does it say to you? This is absolutely extraordinary, Vlad. It's difficult for me to get my uh, head around this, given the fact that uh, typically when uh, one of the pilots leaves the cockpit, uh, a flight attendant normally would come in just for the ability to reopen the door and particularly on an A320, which has a pretty, pretty sizable uh, flight deck. It's, uh... it's an extra special and rare total lunar
lunar eclipse taking place this Saturday morning, it has some people worried for this Easter weekend. The blood moon is a rare celestial event, yet for the third time in less than a year, the moon will dip behind the Earth's shadow, appearing a deep coppery red for a few minutes. And this will transform the skies over North America, Asia, and Australia into a deep red color. Now, there are several interesting things about this particular blood moon. While some eclipses can last an hour or more, this will be the shortest lunar eclipse of this century. It's also taking place the morning of Easter Vigil, which is traditionally observed as the period between Good Friday and Easter Sunday. The eclipse also falls within the first night of Passover, which is observed by Jews worldwide beginning Friday at sunset. Now, according to NASA, the rare tetrad of four alignments in close proximity has only happened a handful of times in the last 2,000 years. The final blood moon eclipse of the tetrad series will take place September 28, 2015, which also happens to be a Jewish holiday. Many people believe that these lunar eclipses and their appearance on auspicious dates signals a world-changing event that's about to take place.